States, but guess what? I was able to do it for you today, and this is what the fruit looks like that contains the cocoa beans. These are called cocoa pods, and these grow on trees in very select parts throughout the world. About 10 to 15 degrees north and south of the equator, areas that are very hot and humid, lots of rainfall, and well-drained soils. And in these areas, the cocoa tree will absolutely flourish. Now what's interesting about the way this fruit grows on the tree is unlike oranges and apples that tend to grow on the outside of the branches, cocoa trees with a cocoa pod attaches itself to the main branches. And if you look at this picture here, you can see how that happens. Very different. But these cocoa pods are very heavy, so if they were to be attached to the outer branches, the branches would simply break. So that's what the cocoa pods look like. Inside this cocoa pod, if I was to open it up, and I can do this a little bit later, you'll find about 40 to 50 of these cocoa beans inside here. Okay? Now not all cocoa beans are created equal, and depending on where from different parts of the world they come from, they have different flavor characteristics. So understanding this and going to different parts of the world, taking this cocoa, bringing it together, is how you create really rich chocolate flavors. Well, after we've done that, we bring those cocoa beans here to California. We start with the cocoa beans. The first thing we have to do is we need to remove a small shell that's surrounding them. The small shell is, is held onto the inside. We crack it, we break it, and we take that shell away, and what we're left with is the inside of the cocoa bean. These are called cocoa nibs. So this is the heart of the cocoa bean itself. The next thing we're going to do with these nibs is we're going to roast them. Roasting is a process that develops chocolate flavor. So if we're going to make a bittersweet chocolate, we'll roast for a long period of time at a very high temperature. If we're going to make a milk chocolate, we'll roast for a shorter period of time at a lower temperature. Well, after we roasted these nibs, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grind them up. Because these nibs contain about 50% cocoa butter. So if you grind these nibs, you release that cocoa butter, and you grind it finer and finer, what you end up with is this. This is called unsweetened chocolate. This is the heart of the chocolate here, and if you smell this, it's so rich. Now if you want to taste it, you can taste it a little bit later, but i got to give you a warning. It's really intense. There's no sugar in this, so only take a small amount, but I invite you to take a taste a little bit later. So, if we're going to make chocolate, we're going to need to start with this material, unsweetened chocolate, and then if we're going to make a dark chocolate, we'll take this plus sugar, and that's basically what a dark chocolate is, these two ingredients. If we're going to make a milk chocolate, we'll take these two ingredients plus some milk powder. Blend that together, and that's basically what a milk chocolate is. And, as you would expect, I brought some of that for you to taste today, too. Now, what you're notice is when you taste this, It'll taste like a milk chocolate, but you'll notice it'll be very gritty on your palate. And that shouldn't surprise us because we're just using regular sugar. Well, that tells you that there's a grinding process because for those of you who are familiar with Ghirardelli chocolate, when you eat it, you know it's silky smooth on your palate. So we grind those, the sugar particles very, very finely until it looks like this. Again, you can taste this one. This will melt on your palate. It's unbelievable. It's one of my favorite products in the factory to taste it. So I invite you to taste that one too. After we're at this stage, we put that into a large machine called a conch. It's like a big mixer, and it mixes this material, it heats it up, and it slowly turns it into the silky smooth Ghirardelli chocolate. So I think you can understand that the entire chocolate making process is pretty intense. You have to understand the, different, the differences in the types of cocoa, the different countries. But if you understand that you're willing to go all the trouble to bring cocoa beans into the United States, take the care. At the end of the day, you make a fantastic chocolate product. And I'm very proud to tell you here, Nelly's one of the best in the world. Yes? You said not many other chocolateers start off with a cocoa bean. What do you mean by that? Some people start off with Yeah, so some companies, what they do is rather than go to all the trouble of uh, cocoa beans, they'll actually buy this. They'll buy this from large industrial manufacturers. Unsweetened chocolate. That's exactly right. So they'll start here, eliminating all of the trouble of sourcing the cocoa beans, but for us, it's critical because we want to make sure we get the right cocoa beans to give us the right flavor profile we're looking for. Great question. Anything else? Okay, who wants to taste? Any tasters? I'm bored. What are you interested in? This one? No, the one you said. This is one of them. So taste this one.